Hello everyone, and welcome to my discography review of the one and only Enslaved. Now, my journey to Black Metal was a long one, and it took me so many tries. But these guys finally got me into it about a year ago. We got a lot of albums to get to, so I'm going to get stuck right into it. And just like when I did the Sepultura and Immolation and Cannibal Corpse discographies live, I'm just going to show through my regular music. That seems like a pretty quick way to do it. Because, you know, this isn't a ranking. It's a discography review. Enslaved are just that consistent that trying to rank them is a nightmare. Though I do have maybe four or five that rise above the rest as being my favourites. And picking my top two and bottom place is pretty easy. And then from there, it's just like, what do I do? Where do I put this? So, a ranking was not a good idea. I'm also going to be doing this for Dark Throne, which I might even record straight after this and upload God knows when. <laughs> so, all the way back in 1994, they released a little album called Viking League of Veldi. This is a great start for the band. And straight off the bat, you can tell that they're onto something different, because these are some lengthy tracks, bro. And <laughs> for your debut to be only five tracks in 50 minutes, that's a really bold move. I do think it peaks instantly with its first track, though, which is easily one of my favorite Enslaved songs. That little repeating keyboard melody that keeps on coming back is just oh, gorgeous, but also very creepy. And pff, since they're just very young guys, I'm pretty sure they wrote this album when the, when the two main members were like 14 and 17 or something like that. Just ridiculous. And... I do think that these tracks are a bit long for their own good. Which is of course kind of a... Which is a very common issue when your tracks are that long, but... Overall... I gave this album a 3.5 out of 5. It's pretty close to a 4 though, because there's a lot of gold in this album. But yeah, a very solid start for the band. The artwork is awesome. And it straight away showed that they were onto something different. And... <laughs> it's Leaves Discography has already peaked for me. Because Frost is... I think I put it at number two in my favorite Black Metal Albums ever video. I put it there. This... This is the album that changed my mind on Black Metal. If you want my whole spiel about that, go watch my other video. That I just did about Black Metal. But yeah, Frost by Enslaved. I have a t-shirt for this. It's... I have a... I have a patch on my jacket, which is like... There somewhere, I think. Why am I doing this? <laughs> there somewhere. But yeah. Pretty much every single track here is an absolute ripper. I gave it a four and a half out of five. Um... Pfft. The creepy keyboard intro. I remember listening to that for the first time and being like... What am I getting myself in for? <laughs> and then Loke, which is... Easily one of my favorite Enslaved songs ever. Same with Fenris and Svade Vita, Yggdrasil and Jodenblad. Those last three tracks I'm not the biggest fan of, but like, the first, what, six? Those are, those are all absolute bangers. Also, what's this? Featuring someone on fretless bass. That's fun. I never knew that. So yeah, for us, it's hands down my favorite, and that's probably never going to change. There is one which comes very close, which we will get to in a second. And that's Eld. <laughs> first things first, 793 is my favorite enslaved song full stop, and it might be my favorite Black Metal song of all time. I am definitely going to do an episode of Ben's Favorites, so we can really dive into that. <clears throat> um, but out of the other tracks, Alpha Blot is a brilliant one, Kavas is Blood? I don't know. And the title track are all brilliant. This this one's a another four out of five, but it's pretty damn close to a four and a half out of five. But once again, another really cool artwork, which that's their bass player, I believe, all dressed up in this traditional Norwegian Viking clothing, with what a cup is that, and whatever the hell that is. Much like for us, this is another front to back banger. And it is one of their longer albums, which is kind of inevitable when you first track it 16 minutes. And then everything else is like 8 or 6 minutes. 
and yeah, we went from we were, we actually went from my two favorites to one of my least favorites. As you can see, this is a three out of five. Which whenever I get a three out of five on my rated music, that means I listened to an album and went, it's good, you know, but not much more. Um, pretty much the only track I pick out of here is that one. Maybe we could bother trying to say that. And it's just kind of in one ear and out the other. Now, I have listened to this album like three or four times just to make sure it's not a, um, a case of I haven't listened to it enough. But yeah, each time I pull for it, it's just, it just doesn't quite cut it for me. Though, I'm pretty sure it's the shortest album. Clocking in at only 39 minutes. Yeah, it probably is. But yeah, this is probably my second or third least favourite. Because I know for a fact what my least favourite is, and it's the same one that most people have their least favourite. But, uh, we'll get there when they get... When, blah, 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 blah. We will get there when we get there. Next up is Marjoram. This is one of many enslaved albums where I listen to it all the way through and go, that was awesome. What was my favourite track, though? I don't know. And, uh, much like Bloodham, Bloodhelm, I don't know. There's no L in it. Bloodham. I just kind of listen to it each time and go, okay, that was a banger, but, like, which track's my favourite? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, this one kind of stands out because it's just it's so ruthless. It's probably their most aggressive album. And the... <laughs> The, the way that the guitars and drums are mixed is just so aggressive. I remember listening to this. I listened to most of this a long way back from work one day, I think. I was just kind of like, wow. I did not expect that from enslaved of all bands. Also, why did I not center my camera? That looks a bit better. But yeah, it's kind of what I listen to all the way through, and I'm like, okay. That was furious. What? Where do we go from here? <laughs> but yeah, next up is Money Mansion. Easily my least favourite. Like, I heard a lot of people say that this is one of their worst, if not their worst, and yeah, I definitely agree with that. Because... <laughs> Enslaved are a weird band. And they normally get away with experimentation brilliantly. Here, though, it's just... It just sounds kind of jumbled. If you're going to be going for, like, genre hopping and all that kind of thing, you need to take advantage of... key signatures. And tempos which are not too drastic. You need, I don't know, varying drum patterns at the end of a section to indicate that you're about to break into something new. You need to change the key in relevant ways. And of course, take advantage of key signatures. I'm not even going to bother explaining what a key signature is. But yeah, The Voices is hands down one of the best tracks at number two. And I swear there's another track. No, not really. Also, why do some bands put their outro as the second last track? Pfft. Even the artwork is like, what are you guys doing? It's just... Yeah, I don't know, Monumention is such an oddball in their discography and I kind of don't even know how to talk about it. So we won't. <laughs> okay, next up is Below the Lights, an absolute fan favourite for a lot of people. Because most people put this at, like, number one, two, or three. For me, though, it's probably about... Seventh or sixth. Now, as Fire Slip Queen of the Earth is... Easily one of the best of the sleeve tracks ever. It's very... Relaxing and laid back for the most part. They... They even got a real Mellotron from back in the day to record that song. And it sounds wonderful. Havenless is a fan, fan favorite in Slave Song, which I'm not crazy about like other people are. It's still a pretty damn good track though. The Dead Star and the Crossing are pretty damn good. And the Closer is one that normally stands out to me as well. Once again, it's a three and a half. That's the score I give the most on radio music, so you're just going to have to bear with me if you ever see that score. And once again, another really cool artwork, I must say. And just... This is Slaves doing what they do. They finally morphed into a band who's going to focus more on their progressive rock kind of influences rather than straight up furious black metal like a lot of the earlier stuff was. Of course, with Hat, 
underlyings of prog. Okay, next up is one I enjoy a lot more, Isa. <clears throat> I love these two tracks in particular. And this is when Enslaved had, like, fully transitioned over into being this a black metal band with, like, a 40 or 50% prog leaning. And it's wonderful. The, the production is also gorgeous on here. It's just... <laughs> so heavy and clean and it, it fits it so well keyboards are getting more prevalent the use of regular vocals instead of high shrieks is implemented here and it works very well wait, wait what? not turning cult alone vocals for two tracks? god damn I'm learning so much about this band today also a three and a half? no 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 that's a four this one is awesome. But uh, yeah, those are the the only two tracks I really, really pick out, but like the overall experience is very good. And next time we moved on to Rune, which is another fan favorite for some people. As you can see, I also have this as a four. Oi, not as a five. No, 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 no. <laughs> and yeah, I love the opening track, Rune. The title track is Easily a top five enslaved song for me. That song is gorgeous. And Essence. But uh, once again, those are the only, what, three tracks that really grab me, and the rest is just kind of like, okay, this is good. You know? Much like Monday mentioned, it's kind of a strange art. Like, is this supposed to be waves? And the, at the middle, it always reminded me of a coffee bean. <laughs> like, waves going around a coffee bean. Oh, you know what it also kind of looks like? It also kind of looks like Vex Avoid by Portal. I'm probably gonna cut this, this is so stupid. Do you guys see that at all? Like the middle thing? Anyways. <laughs> bean man, bee bean man. But yeah, overall this is another great one. Because that's pretty much all that slaves do. Just banger after banger. Okay, next up is Vertebrae. Uh, this is another one of my least favorites. First of all, I don't like the production. Like... It's just really bassy, and the guitars have no kick to them at all. They just... <laughs> they, they just don't have enough distortion, too much bass, not enough treble. And the whole time I was listening to this, I was just like, Oh, they should have got a different guitar sound. But uh, yeah, it's another... This is probably like my third or fourth least favourite, so I'm struggling for things to say. <laughs> the title track is pretty damn good. Clouds, ground, and reflection as well. I don't know, man. <laughs> it's one of my least favorites. I've only listened to it twice. I'm not the biggest fan of the production. So we will move on. To one of my favorites. Axioma Ethica Odini. O Odini. Nice. Odini. Uh, it's another one of their longer ones. Clocking in at 58 minutes, but only 9 tracks. So these are some long and meaty tracks. And... Wow. <laughs> now, the the common story for this album is that these guys were touring with Opeth for this one. Right around the time of Ghost Reveries coming out, I think. Could you imagine seeing Opeth and Enslaved at the same time? <sighs> I was only like, what, two or three years old when they toured their respective albums, but that would be brilliant. And because of that Opeth influence, this is one of their few albums where there's like pretty much zero black metal influence at all and it's most of the time most of the time like this 50 50 marriage of death metal and prog metal much like opeth and since opeth are one of my absolute favorite bands i love that this was actually one of the first ones i checked out i think because i was like oh i always see this one sounds like opeth so i'm gonna love it and yes i do the opening track ethico edini like I said, it's got this really Opeth-y kind of feel to it. This track in particular. And much like Opeth, it's got the the um, the switches between regular singing and like shrieks and growls, which does it all the time. Axioma is a short and amazing title track. The last two tracks both close it off excellently. It's not the one of the very strange artworks. Like, 
Is it someone looking through a hole in ice? Or is it a giant stone? I don't know. But yeah, overall this is one of my absolute favourites. It's another 4 out of 5. And I think there's one or two more. One more. We'll get to that there. Okay, next up is another one I don't have a huge amount to say about. Because it's another one of the rounds. It's like, uh, not many mentioned. Uh, Marjoram and... I believe the lights. Right, just listen to it in full. And I go, okay, that was great. What's my favourite track though? I don't know. And I'm pretty sure this is their longest album. Clocking at, clocking in at what an hour and seven minutes, because <laughs> just like normal for them, these tracks are pretty lengthy. Their thoughts like hammers is definitely one of their best songs, and one that they play live a lot, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, it's another three and a half out of five. I'm kind of infamous for giving three out of five to freaking everything. Hell, if you go to my ratings, where is it? Is this going to show well on my screen? Yeah. Look at this! 410 3 out of 5s. 3.5 out of 5s. Out of 1,058 ratings. <laughs> and I'm actually going to give this one another spin, because it's been a while. I think I've only listened to it once, maybe twice. No, once. The Thoughts Like Hammers? That's one I listen to in... That's one I listen to in isolation quite a lot, because it's awesome. And you should like it too. And this is another one. I see some people toss it around as being their favourite. Like, uh, Questy, if you watch it. And I know that, um, Burning Yokon down on the Discord likes this one a lot, also if you're watching. Love you, buddy. Wait, what? In Times is next. This is another one where they use a shorter track listing because the, the songs are so long. Like, this is only six tracks in 53 minutes, so... Yeah. Um... <laughs> Okay, straight off the bat, Thoros as Dreaming is definitely my favourite song on here. It's got this really slow and repetitive kind of nature to it. And has this like building and building kind of feel and then bringing everything back down and then building and building and bringing everything back down. I'm kind of picky when bands do that, but it's enslaved. They're amazing at pretty much everything they do. Uh, <sighs> building with Fire and the title track are also really good. And once again, lengthy pieces that take their time to build and it's worth it when they do. Uh, the other three tracks, I'm not too crazy about. And I'll say it once again, that artwork is so strange, but I love it. Okay, next up is, uh, I'm getting to the part of the list where I haven't really listened to these that much. Just like quite a few of these, you know? Can I get, oh, I was trying to scoop up my cat. Come on. Say hello to everyone. Screw it, I'm doing it for you. <laughs> Anyways, on to E. Um, this is. You guys are gonna get. You guys are gonna get so tired of me saying this. It's another one I listened to front to back and go, that was great. Yeah. That's. <laughs> pretty much all I need to say about this one. But yeah, we reached a part in Sleep's discography where they're mostly a prog metal band. And black metal was like a small secondary ingredient in their sound. Also, I'm, I think that E is a super bland name for an album. Like, just one letter. Really? Maybe if it was like a two or three track EP, I'd be like, okay, it's only an EP. You wanna call it E? That's stupid, but go for it. <laughs> But, like, when you have cool names, like, what? Below the Lights. Exica, uh, what is it? Axioma Ethica Odini. Like, then you just call it E? There's probably some kind of underlying significance I'm not aware of. But, yeah. It's stupid. Anyways. Utgard. Oh, the first two tracks, in particular, are really good. And then the rest of them kind of like... Alright. Solid. <laughs> I've said that for like six in a row. Oh my god. <laughs> Talking about Enslaved is tough, alright? Because <laughs> they're one of those bands just like, I don't know, Immolation or Cannibal Corpse where they kind of do the same thing over and over. 
but there's just enough new elements each time to where you're like, damn, I've never heard them do that before. And what are you doing? <laughs> My cat is such a moron, bro. Hey! What you doing? <laughs> um, oh, so we're training for So we'll move on to Heimdall. Heimdall is one of my favorites. When this album came out, what, two or three months ago? I just sat there in awe. Just thinking, this is your 16th studio album. And they're still experimenting so much. Like, this is quite possibly the most keyboard-heavy album I've ever done. There are some tracks which have almost no screamed vocals in them at all. Behind the Mirror is... <laughs> An absolute rager. It's so aggressive, and then it moves into the beautiful chorus. Congelia is my least favorite song in the album, hands down. It's just kind of monotonous, and the drum beat gets old pretty quickly. But then Forest Dweller, D Dweller, Dorella, wow. Forest Dweller is easily one of my favorite Slaves tracks already. I remember when the music video came out, I'm pretty sure I watched it twice in one go. Because I was just like, <laughs> how do Enslaved keep on doing this? They just consistently make bangers after bangers. Eternal Sea is awesome. Caravans to the Outer Worlds was probably one of my least favorite of the singles. No, Congelia was. And the, pff, the lengthy title track at the end. This is another 4 out of 5. And it's one of my favorite albums of this year so far. I think it's at number 4 or 5. I'll put it there. And that has brought us to the end of the Enslaved discography. If you want to be a brave soul and try and rank them all, go for it. Or if you want to do what I did and just like put stars out of five next to them, or out of ten, blah blah blah, go for it. I have been <laughs> meaning to do this for so long and you guys are going to be elated that I finally did it. That was fun. And my next discography review is going to be The Mighty Dark Throne. Twenty freaking albums. And it's going to be just like this one. <laughs> Where there's like seven in a row where I'm like, oh yeah, that one's decent. Three and a half out of five, next. <laughs> it's gonna be so boring. Anyways, that is all I have for you today. And I'll see you in the next one.